All right, so like I said, we've got a couple of electric guitar parts here. Oh, this is another time when um, I had to kind of deviate from the let's do everything for free or as cheap as possible. Uh, I'm not a big fan of guitar sims. And honestly, I didn't just want to spend a week or two weeks trying to search around for an acceptable free guitar sim. I'm sure they're out there. Honestly, if you know of one, uh, mention it in the comments. Uh, if you have one that you use, it's a, the you know, freebie that you like, you think isn't just kind of garbage, <laughs> then uh, yeah, drop it in the comments and uh, let everybody know because I'd be a little curious myself. I happened to pick up Amplitude before on sale, I don't know, months ago, and I've hardly used it at all. So as I tracked guitar here, I monitored through Amplitude, I found a couple of presets that I liked, and I just kind of rolled with them. So let's have a listen to, and I believe they are called Tele 1 and Tele 2. Yes, they are. Here's Tele 1. I could probably name this track a little bit better, so it's a little more, um, descriptive to me, uh, but since I tracked it, I know all this. If you're tracking yourself, handing your files off, do a good job of naming your tracks for goodness sake. Uh, all right, so Telly One, he, I'm just gonna solo him and have a listen. Uh, of course, he's turned all the way down, so let me start bringing him up a little. And so this is my uh, USA uh, Deluxe Telecaster, and it's plugged directly into the instrument input of the Behringer UMC-22, and then Amplitube on top of that. And here, let's take a quick look at what I'm using on Amplitube. Uh, again, I'm not very experienced with Amplitube because I'm, I'm just not crazy about sims. Uh, so I'm using one of the default ones, and honestly, I didn't change a single knob on this whole thing. So this is kind of their Fender Twin clone, so the American Tube Clean. Uh, I, left, I left the bass middle treble and presence all right smack dab in the middle. Uh, I left the spring reverb even uh, right at its default setting of two. It sounded just right. I mean, just right out of the box, this kind of did everything I wanted it to do, so I didn't really find any reason to really change it much. Uh, volume, yeah, so one thing that I did add, uh, let's take a look at the stomp boxes. So as you can hear, since I'm kind of going for that Fender clean, I left the, that spring reverb on, uh, I'm really just wanting it to sound like, uh, you know, oh, yep, yep, there he is, like that amp, which is a uh, deluxe reverb that has tremolo and spring reverb built in. Uh, it's kind of going for that. So I left the spring reverb on, a little subtle. I added a tremolo pedal uh, from Amplitube, and it just kind of gives it that nice little... <laughs> As you can hear, I, I don't have the rate of the tremolo uh, synced up with the um, with the tempo or anything. I didn't really want it that specific. I just kind of picked a, a, a nice uh, tremolo tempo that I liked and just kind of went for the effect I'm going for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. So let's take it off solo. I'll put the fader all the way back down, start playing, and kind of bring it up. Okay, let's hear it again. Okay, I'm gonna go back and turn that kick drum down a little bit. Um, whoops, no, that's acoustic. Yeah, go back, go back to where you were at. Uh, yeah, let's go find the kick drum. And I'm gonna notch him down another decibel. So he's at minus two, let's get him down to minus three. Oh wait, no, he was actually at positive something. Here, let me control Z. He was at positive 1.9, so let's just put him back to unity. 
Okay. All right, all right. Although I'm not so sure I want that electric guitar just straight up the middle like that. Uh, let's add just a little bit of interest and I'm gonna get them off maybe to, eh, I'll get them off to the left, maybe about 20% or so. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm just trying to think ahead a little bit, maybe leave a little bit room for the vocal. Uh, even though the, the, that guitar part and the vocal parts don't really overlap much. Um, all right, all right. So, Tele 2. So this is the second uh, electric guitar. And again, this is the, the Fender Telecaster direct into the interface and then with Amplitube on top of that. So let's take a look at what I've got for Amplitube on this one. On, the, on this one, I'm using their uh, JCM 800 clone. Again, it's an amp I'm obviously familiar with. Uh, so I wanted to at least just kind of work in the ballpark of where I kind of know what I'm doing since I'm just not uh, a big user of the Sims. So again, it looks like I pretty much left. <laughs> so yeah, this is their Brit 8000, which is their JCM 800. Uh, I've got it on the low sensitivity. Uh, I left, looks like pretty much everything just straight up the middle, bass is dialed back a little bit, uh, master volumes cranked up a little bit, uh, preamps uh, just under 12 o'clock. All right. And did I add, yes, I added actually a stomp pedal to this, so I actually added an overdrive pedal uh, with just a little less than unity gain. This actually turned out to be a really loud pedal. Um, a little bit extra tone to give a little bit of brightness. Um, a fair amount of distortion. All right, so let me solo Telly 2, uh, start playing, and I will bring it up slowly. So you can see that that delay is like really pronounced on it. Uh, and I really kind of wanted this almost as a special effect. So this isn't really going to play a huge role in the mix. I just want it kind of at a low level in there, just adding a little bit of ambience, a little bit of kind of texture to things. Uh, so I think I am going to pan him pretty hard the opposite way from where I just pan the other uh, electric guitar. So I'm going to get him maybe 70 or 80 percent. Um, let's get him 80 percent over to the right. And I'm gonna bring his volume back down, take solo off, let's listen to everything and bring it in just so we can kind of just hear it. I think I've kind of changed my mind about the mono delay thing. I think I would kind of rather have it. Uh, let's see what happens if we do an LR. Uh, I'm gonna have to solo it so I can hear what I'm hear what I'm doing. All right. Let's see what stereo is. No. LCR? Ooh, that's... Although... Turn the mix down a little. And that's kind of too many feedbacks. Okay, all right, fair enough. And you can hear just because of where I have the effect plates, it's an insert. Uh, and since I have panned uh, the guitar over to the right, even those, those echoes on the left are much quieter. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that, so I may have to get rid of this delay and instead use an insert delay so I can play with where I have it placed. 
uh, in the routing so that maybe I want the primary guitar off to the right, but I still want the delays bouncing back and forth at, at the same volume rather than having the, even the delays shifted over that way. I don't know. I don't know. I, well, we'll have to uh, play with it. All right, here is where we've got to in introduce another really important element to our mix. And that is reverb. And I guess it depends on preference, uh, whether you wait till everything else is mixed and then start adding reverb in. But with the way that I like to use reverb, and here, we'll do it real quick. Let me just double click and blank space, insert a new track. Uh, I'm gonna name this uh, plate reverb. And here is one more place where I'm cheating and not using something free. I used free. Uh, reverb VSTs for 10 or 12 years, and honestly, I thought they sucked. <laughs> I, I just never could find one that made me happy. There are some okay ones out there, and even Reverb that comes with Reaper isn't isn't all that bad. Reverb is a convolution reverb, which means you can load impulse files, which uh, you can find all over the internet that mimic different spaces. So you can load up a file that'll basically load a reverb profile of some room or some space, which is pretty cool. Uh, it still just didn't satisfy me, so at some point uh, I bought, uh, here, let's go ahead and, and open it up, and I'll type in Lexi, which is for Lexicon's MPX Reverb. This is kind of their entry-level reverb. Uh, it's modeled after one of their digital reverb uh, units. Uh, I got this one on sale for 50 bucks. I think it normally sells for 100 bucks, but it requires an iLock. Don't get me started on iLock, I hate it. Uh, since this was half price, I got this uh, you know, $50 off, the iLock was $50. And so I basically bought it and got a free iLock. So this is definitely not free. There, there are plenty of free reverbs out there to try. I encourage you to find all you can, try all you can. I was just never happy with them. And honestly, <laughs> the thought of going back to free ones just kind of kills me. So, okay, I'm cheating here with our whole low cost thing. Uh, and using a using a paid for uh, reverb. All right, I am gonna find like maybe a chamber or some. Oh no, this is gonna be for vocals. Uh, um, but I'm also gonna use it for some other things. So I'm gonna select large plates, and I really like the large vocal plate on here. And I'm just gonna leave it at the preset settings for now. Again, presets are great starting points. Uh, it's worth tweaking and learning what all the parameters do. I wouldn't just rely solely on presets. Uh, what I've done so far here, I've done a lot of just kind of relying on presets. But honestly, I like the way the presets sound. They, they don't, they make me happy. So why change a good thing? Why, why, why fix it if it ain't broke? So we'll leave that on there. So now this, this reverb's on its own track. What the heck do we do with it? Well, now we can use this one instance of the reverb and we can start sending other tracks into it as an auxiliary or an aux send. And that'll allow multiple tracks to all tap into the same reverb. For something like a reverb, that works really well. And a, and a delay maybe that'll work really well. Uh, for things like EQs and compressors, uh, don't try that. <laughs> Okay, so I got my reverb uh, set. I got it set how uh, I'm probably gonna like it. We haven't even heard it yet, so I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not. But let's um, let's use that Tele 2, that second kind of effects guitar, and let's use him as our first kind of send over to, and yeah, so I click on, again, I'm using a different skin, so yours might look a little different. So uh, it's one of the buttons on the track and it'll say sends, receives, and hardware output options. So I click on that. I'm gonna say add a new send. I'm gonna send it to Plate Reverb. Uh, let's go ahead and play it and see what it sounds like. Oh yeah. If I turn the send volume down, totally dry. Ow. Is that too much reverb? Might back it up just a little bit. Yeah, so now it's just kind of swimming and swirling in the left and right stereo field. I like that. I like what the reverb added to it. I like what the delay adds to it. Uh, I just want it there as a just kind of low level special effect. Uh, although I have a feeling just to avoid problems later. Whoops. Where'd he go? Here he is. 
just to avoid problems later, I'm probably gonna go ahead and after Amplitube, let's add another EQ. And I'm probably gonna get rid of some of that low end. And since this is a special effect guitar, I'm just, I'm not gonna worry about high, high pass and I don't care about it degrading the low end. It's not there for the low end at all. So let's play and listen and I'll adjust the frequency of the cut. So like that's too high, still too high. Yeah, there we go. And it's gonna be low enough in the mix. Yeah. All right, I think that's just about right for what I want. Now let's hear it in context. And now that I'm listening to it, that other Telecaster, uh, it just sounds really dull. I think that I need to do a little EQ on it because I, I don't like the way that it's sounding in the mix right now. So, since I know for this guitar, I'm probably not gonna be as aggressive to put a high pass on it. So let's go with a low shelf. Uh, we'll keep low shelf, yeah, 100 hertz, that's fine. And in context here, I'm gonna start dialing down the gain. You can see it just kind of brings down the low end altogether. Uh, so in context, let's hit play and listen to it. I'll, I'll bring down the gain until I like it. Okay, and that's not so bad. You know, it didn't it didn't really hurt, and having that low end out of there is not so bad. Bass guitar's got a little more room to breathe. Uh, although I'm gonna add another band. Let's go to band number three. And and I want it just as a band. Uh, and let me, uh, yeah, 1K, 2, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll adjust the frequency here. I'm gonna crank up the gain on this band and sweep a little bit until I kinda like what I hear. I'll keep the bandwidth uh, default because I want kind of a wide boost here. So I'm gonna have my hand on the frequency here and play it and listen to the Telecaster that's pan 20% left. <laughs> Well, that was not the place to do it. How about we try it someplace where it's playing? All right, let's hear it again. I might actually, and now I made an exaggerated kind of boost here uh, just so I could hear what I was doing. I was gonna turn it down afterwards just to reduce how exaggerated it is, but I kind of like it in context, that big giant boost right there. And let's hear it again, and I might actually turn it up a little. Nope, too much. All right. Okay, all right, all right. Now I might be able to turn that down in the mix a little bit, that, that guitar over on the, uh, on the left. But one thing I'm noticing with that guitar is that it, some of the notes are kind of poking out a lot and there's just kind of this character to it that I don't really care for. I think I'm gonna compress that guitar a little bit just to kind of bring down some of those dynamics, make it just a little more even. Uh, so over on Tele One, I'm gonna click on the inserts and let's see, after Amplitube and after the EQ, I am going to add an instance of Rhea Comp. And uh, let's have a little listen here. I have a feeling I'm gonna probably want, let's start at a four to one ratio for him. I have a feeling I'm gonna to wanna to be a little aggressive with this. Um, don't really care about a fast attack. Yeah, pretty fast release. All right, let's use that as a starting point. Let's listen. You know, that's a little better. Okay.
Yeah, yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. I think I will turn it down in the mix a little bit. Let's hear it. I could probably live with that for now. All right, so yeah, that kind of smushed the dynamic range on it just a little bit, just enough to, so it didn't quite stick out as much. All right, Tele 2, you know, I'm pretty happy with where it's at, I guess. All right, so next we will tackle the vocals. <laughs> 